Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Oh my god. I just got a minute into that video and I clicked on Audacity and realized I wasn't recording. Could you imagine, dude? Do you guys feel like the people who died on the Titanic would be offended by iceberg videos? Hey, what's up everybody? It's Gambetto Gaming and we're back with more iceberg content. Today we're taking a look at the Animal Crossing series. This is one of my favorite life sim series. Probably is my favorite. Uh, this series has had a bunch of games. Uh, I think it's up to five, four or five now. And throughout the series, uh, there's been a lot of similarities, but there's just been a lot of differences and the weird shit that happens in the background. And the overall just conspiracy theories people have formed over the years about these games. We're going to cover a lot of that. In today's iceberg, we're gonna do the first three layers today, and then the second video will tackle the second two layers. So let's go ahead and get started. Bells or seeds. Uh, this theory states that people think bells, the currency in Animal Crossing, is actually just seeds, as in uh, crop seeds. Like we're playing motherfucking Harvest Moon. Uh, this main theory comes from the fact that bells are stored in sacks. I think this theory kind of fell apart when they added the denominations of coins under a thousand bells. When you drop a denomination under a thousand, it'll just be a little coinage. So, unless there's coinage shaped seeds, I'm calling this myth busted. Bad luck. So in the game, players can experience different forms of luck. One of these being bad luck. These choices of luck can be obtained from the character Katrina, who is the fortune teller of the game. Katrina can give you a list of different lucks you can get, one being neutral, uh, meaning fuck all is going to happen, nothing. Love, villagers of the opposite gender of the player will follow them around frequently. Uh, they had to get rid of that one in the latest release, New Horizons, because of new gender norms. Uh, you can get lucky finances, which means trees will drop, drop a thousand bells rather than a hundred. Uh, and then the one we're all here for, unlucky. Uh, which means the player just trips and falls, usually. Anytime you start to gain a little speed, you just trip and scrape your face up like you're four years old. Overworked Isabel. This theory comes from the fact that uh, since a player is usually in control of the town, at least in the past few games, um, you've been in sort of a leadership role. Uh, New Horizons, I think they call you the community leader or whatever. Animal Crossing is also known as a leisure game. So while you're leisuring, who's covering... Who's doing your work other than Isabel? Uh, so this theory believes that while you're doing fuck all, i.e. catching your 7,434th sea bass, Isabel's in there doing your taxes so the FBI don't come to your island and raid everything you have. Pigeon milk. So throughout the Animal Crossing series, it's possible to gain the friendship of a lot of different uh, NPC characters, even further than that of uh, villagers, these like staff members. Uh, we're talking about Brewster today, pretty much. The owl who runs the coffee shop who has yet to be added to New Horizons, so I will have to show grainy footage from 1975 when Brewster was last in a video game. And many of the Animal Crossing games that Brewster is in, if you gain his friendship and trust by talking to him daily, uh, you will gain the trust of him and he will give you a little prize. This prize is pigeon milk. Bruh. Uh, this is a mysterious substance that doesn't have much explanation from Brewster himself, so we can only assume, you know, it's something a little bit like lean. 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 Or it could just be his fat bird nut in a glass. Time traveling. Uh, this is one of the more well-known things you can do in Animal Crossing games, and it's actually a nice little life hack for uh, if people don't want to play by the rules. Uh, there's a whole debacle online, uh, especially when New Horizons came out. The time travelers versus the non-time travelers. I stuck for non-time traveling as long as I could, but I just restarted the game and I'm time traveling again, so I'm not a <laughs> anymore. Uh, if you are not informed of what time travel is, uh, you can usually change the system clock of whatever Animal Crossing game you're playing and can advance forward in time. Uh, this can save time for things that take longer than a day to do, i.e. upgrading the shop or a museum or building a new bridge and new horizons. However, time traveling has a few sacrifices you have to make to use it. Uh, cockroach infest infestations uh, usually occur, 
and uh, the big one is your turnips rotting. But overall, I, I still think these are uh, small prices to pay for time traveling. Mean villagers. Yeah, so this is referencing the GameCube era. Uh, the villagers used to just speak their mind, man. It was 1965, and man, you know, man, we, you know, more we used to be able to speak our mind back then. But yeah, these uh, the villagers used to be ruthless, man. Just take a look at some of these. I mean, they're talking about like deep stuff, bro. Like you're fall into deep depression and cut off your own nutsack, dude. Champ is Porter's brother. Uh, Champ and Porter are both very similar looking monkeys in the Animal Crossing universe. Uh, Porter has a job while Champ is a freeloading piece of shit. So Porter runs the train station in the Animal Crossing universe and Champ is just the villager that you can run across. Uh, but they look strangely very similar, especially in the GameCube version. Uh, and Porter's e-reader card even reveals that he does in fact have a brother. So a lot of people have assumed that these two characters are brothers. It makes a lot of sense to me. Serena. So this character is from Animal Crossing City Folk, and she acts as the counterpart to Farley, who was a character in the older GameCube games, uh, who we will talk about uh, later on the list. Her role, Serena, is she gives the players uh, both silver and gold axes. So yeah, this costs a lot of money to do, and in the long run, you get a axe that does not break. Uh, and you get to see this pretty cool character who's very hidden away and not referenced a lot throughout the games. Suspiciously similar songs. So a lot of people think the KK songs or just music from Animal Crossing in general sounds very similar to other real life music or other video game music in general. Uh, a few examples of this are uh, some people on a forum said, Rock and KK sounds like Johnny B. Good. I thought Go Go, I thought Go KK Rider sounds very similar to Steel Samurai theme from Ace Attorney. I just listened to KK D and B live and it sounds very similar to the Super Smash Bros. 64 character selection screen. So I think uh, this is just in general uh, Nintendo IPs and their music being related to one another because uh, they're so tightly knit under the same company. Uh, you'll get similar songs for different games entirely that sound very similar and also just referencing that in anime and other uh, forms of media everything kind of sounds like everything Blanca so Blanca is a mysterious uh, NPC character that you can run through throughout the series I don't think she's in New Horizons yet so Blanca or Blanca she just gives a weird vibe off because just usually characters with no face give you just a, a creepy, eerie vibe. Uh, that's why Slenderman works so well as a character because he be missing the face. Uh, and that is the case for Blanca as well. She's missing a face. This is usually just for a little bit of a mini game where uh, players can draw a face on, on, on her and she'll keep the face throughout the series. That's not to say that the first time you run into Blanca, you're going to be scared shitless, man. We're going to just take that cat's face off. Y'all are just going to have to deal with the consequences. Needless to say, I, I remember getting scared of Blanca when I was a kid. Not necessarily scared. I guess just creeped out. Uh, even after you drew the face, it still just did not feel right because you knew that was a temporary tattoo almost. You know, she was going to go home, take a shower, and it's just going to be the same nightmare over again until she, she runs into another unlucky piece of shit with a Sharpie marker. Zipper T Bunny is Phyllis. Fill this dick. So Zipper T Bunny is a seasonal NPC that visits your town during the uh, spring uh, seasons due to the holiday of Easter. And he usually has some stupid activity that he wants you to do. And New Horizons, you had to collect fucking a thousand different eggs from every fucking corner of the earth. And it's known in the series that Zipper T Bunny is actually just somebody in a suit because even in his name zipper it's referencing that he has a zipper on the back of his his suit of course there's been nothing official to uh narrow it down who is actually in the zipper t bunny suit but a lot of people will have a pretty good guess as to who it is and that is phyllis phyllis is the old bird who used to run the post office at nighttime in animal crossing the original game and people think this is the same character due to the fact that that talk on, uh, under their breath and kind of just mutter to themselves. I think Tom Nook does it in certain circumstances, but these two are much more similar. 
magical leaves. So this is referring to the fact that uh, most items in the game, when uh, left on the ground or just out of pocket, is represented by a leaf. There's been no official comment on this or why this takes place, but a lot of people think this is just a magical representation, uh, some sort of spell that's been cast on just general everyday items that when you take them out of your pocket, they just form into a leaf, which means they're much more easy to carry. You can carry a bunch of leaves in your pocket. You can't carry a bunch of wardrobes. This idea kind of reminds me of a Jimmy Neutron episode where Jimmy is going on this huge trip so he makes this little cube. Inside the cube, he can fit anything, even his fucking massive dong. And so everything he's packing for the trip, he's like, well, fuck, I, I want to bring a lot of things. I, I think he has a lot of gadgets he wants to bring. So he just tosses everything in this little cube. And inside the cube, it's just the the 17th dimension where, he, where, where it's just Jimmy Neutron's things. And, he, and then he just puts the cube in his pocket, and he just has everything he needs in there. It, it's probably the same science behind uh, the magical leaves from Animal Crossing. KK Swing. This is one of the start of a few of the, the items on this list are actually just songs that people find very disturbing and creepy. Uh, I couldn't really hear it, maybe a little bit in KK Swing. One person in the comments said that maybe it has something to do with some of the reverse melodies that play throughout the song and just the overwhelming feeling of loneliness you hear from it. I don't really hear the overwhelming feeling of loneliness, but I do kind of hear what they mean by reverse melodies. What is the source of the balloons? The balloons are events that occur in the Animal Crossing universe where players need to shoot them down from the air with a slingshot you can buy, usually from the nook shop that you have in your town. These have appeared all the way since the beginning, uh, but they've changed a lot, and there's been a lot of speculation as to as to where the balloons originate. So they originally appeared in Animal Crossing for the GameCube, but they ran randomly appeared, and there was no slingshot in that game. So unless they fell into a tree, you would never be able to get uh, the balloons down. So in Wild World, it worked a little bit different. Uh, they only appeared from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., which is a weird schedule. So the presence in Animal Crossing City Folk take a pretty a pretty set out route along the acre boundaries um which a lot of people have noticed are the same routes that Gulliver's ufo takes so a lot of that um ties into where maybe these balloons are coming from. uh Gulliver's ufo appears in animal crossing city folk and a lot of people may be thinking he's dropping the balloons at night possibly maybe he flies out uh pretty far out in the ocean drops them in the the wind carries them throughout the day. Uh, some people say maybe it's alien activity. Some people say it's a it's another island or another another land or another city sending presents over. Some people think it's uh, gifts from the heavens. Uh, I don't know which one I particularly believe in, but I'm also not thinking too much because when I see a balloon, all I'm hoping for is cash money, boy. Resetti Center. So the Resetti Center throughout the Animal Crossing series is kind of like a Easter egg that players can find throughout the different games and sometimes they'll give you presents for finding them other times it's just literally just an easter egg the first appearance of the Resetti center so the dabatsu nu mori e plush probably should have been a layer of itself uh on the iceberg but just to summarize really quick uh the animal crossing e plus is a japanese exclusive copy of animal crossing on the gamecube um, and it's basically just a expanded version of the game. Uh, they feature some new characters, some new bugs and fish, and a lot of other content that was either cut from the original game or not featured, like the Resetti Center. City Folk is when the second appearance of the Resetti Center was, uh, and it was found in the city portion. And you can only find it on random evenings after 8 p.m. Uh, once entering, the two brothers, Resetti or Don, will be there. And either one will just ask you to fucking leave. And if you keep pestering them, they'll eventually give 
a silver shovel. Uh, there's even an incident where if the player goes back on subsequent visits, you can find a little cutscene in which an alarm goes off. Uh, Mr. Resetti is then pulled back in his chair and exits the building to go find the pesky resetter. New Leaf, the 3DS game, the Resetti Surveillance Center, returns, but this time it's a Publix work project. Funnily enough, funnily <sighs> enough, Nintendo wanted to make resetting a optional thing for players because there was a lot of trauma that came from Mr. Resetti from the original games for uh, younger players. By the time New Leaf came out, they wanted to push him further back because he is just a lot to deal with sometimes. So they, they made him more of an optional thing, making him locked behind a Publix work project that cost 368,000 bells. Sorry, dude, but I'm not that interested in seeing your digs. Hypno KK. So this is another KK song that uh, made its way on the list because a few people find it a little bit weird. I just find it really trippy and just uh, kind of relaxing. And the word hypno just kind of relates to sleep, so I, I think that's what they were kind of going with. And a cool little fact, the character Sherb, who is a blue goat, who is lazy and usually portrayed as pretty sleepy. This song can usually be found playing in his house. Mysterious Letters. The Mysterious Letters is a weird, kind of creepy phenomenon that occurs throughout just across the Animal Crossing series in general. Sometimes when you go up to a villager and you talk to them, they'll pull out a piece of paper, a, a strange letter they received, and they'll, they'll try to get your opinion on it. You are then prompted with two options that either say if you understand the letter or if you don't. Uh, and the letters can be anything from like weird, hey, I, I, I saw you eating cake the other day. Or is something like, hey man, I smell you from where I'm at. Yeah, just weird shit like that. The letters kind of seem like they don't have a point and they're just there to be a little bit eerie, maybe a little creepy. But in fact, the stuff that they are saying in these letters are very hidden, very cleverly hidden gameplay hints. And usually anyone you can find, you can tie back to something you can do in the game. And the game is subtly trying to teach you that stuff. Like in one letter, they may be like, hey... I hear you're whistling at night just like I can hear crickets at night. Who was supposed to be the mayor? Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of theories going around on who was supposed to be the mayor in New Leaf because when you arrive in New Leaf, uh, you're very promptly just thrown into the position of mayor. You didn't know about it, and I don't think anybody else knew about it really, uh, and everybody just kind of accepts it. Uh, even though the character is very confused, they just go along with it. This leads... People to believe that maybe uh, another person was supposed to arrive on the train and it was just a mix-up. So who who was that person supposed to be? Uh, a lot of people have a lot of theories going around. Uh, a popular one is that Isabel was supposed to be the mayor, uh, and she, this is because she was very trusted by Tortimer and worked below him when he was mayor. Uh, and she knows all the routines and everything that needs to be done. Like we mentioned before, she's the secretary and just makes sure everything gets done. Uh, she is the only one that kind of forces the job onto you, like really pushes it, as in like, even when the player responds with like, hey, I don't think I'm supposed to be ma mayor. Uh, she'll be like, wow, you got jokes, ha, huh? you're funny. Uh, she's really denying the fact that you are not mayor and it's people think she's trying to push the job off onto the player and this is because she's a pretty shy and self-conscious person you can see that through her dialogue uh so yeah some people think that isabel was just too embarrassed or too shy to, be to become the mayor of the, the the new town you move into in new leaf so she just pushed the the job off on the the next person she saw, which was just the villager moving in. Uh, another person interesting interestingly thinks it's actually Rover, the cat you first meet in a lot of the games, uh, where he just introduces himself, and this is where you usually type your name and your your town's name and just general information like that. The guy says, personally, I think it was Rover who was meant to be mayor. He meets us on the train, awaiting to step into town with this new job. Then he freaks out. He says us going to the same place, asks us all these questions, and deems us worthy. He decides not to go off at the station and lets us become mayor. We arrive in the town. We tell the townspeople they're confused. Isabel says, well, you said you were coming, and you're the only one that got off, or something like that. Uh, that's why when we get the letter, it says, to be honest, I was supposed to be mayor. Since he approached us on the train f for simple conversation, he was just trying to figure out if we were worthy to be mayor in his place, his real intention. 
he's the only person who knew we would become mayor since he was supposed to be a mayor in the first place. It's a very interesting theory. Uh, I like to go with that. Rover's kind of that like special villager animal that uh, isn't a villager, but he's also just a very plain NPC. And I, I think that would be a pretty interesting backstory to, to Rover is that he was secretly like political this whole time. And it was just a put villagers that aren't animals. So there's a choice few. I think there's only six unless there's been more added since New Horizons. But there's a few choice villagers that you can get that aren't actually animals. They are just things that kind of represent animals. Uh, Hopkins is a blue rabbit. But the thing that makes him special and different from the other rabbits is the fact that he has an air tube on the back of his head. Making it... Uh, that he is just a huge inflatable rabbit that walks around and could easily be killed by just somebody flicking him on the back of the head. Just flick that little air tube open. And uh, Coco's a rabbit uh, that I'm pretty fond of. I, I had her in my town. I really like her. She is very disturbing, though, and very creepy to a lot of people because she is expressionless, emotionless. Quite honestly, is a rabbit with holes in her face. She resembles that of a gyroid. She's the only character like this, and she's been in the series for... I think since the first one, and there's been no real explanation as to why she looks like that. I've grown to like it. Call me Stockholm, you know? Uh, Dell's a robotic villager who has holes drilled into the side of his face. Yeah, a lot of people think the holes in his face are for the connection to the croc shoe, but I like to think that uh, he just got fucking holes drilled in his face just because that's how life is sometimes. Sprocket's another robot. Uh, this time it's a peacock and has a strange orange O4 on the back of its head. Uh, Ribot is a robot frog, and he also has something on the back of his head, uh, the numbers five and nine. And then finally we have Stitches, who is just a stuffed animal, uh, not even really supposed to be alive, and he's very unalive in the fact that he has X's for eyes. So it's very strange, these origins of these villagers, I know, there's references to the origins of the robot villagers, but I'd like to know all of where all these non-animal villagers come from and why they kind of blended in with the other animals to where on surface level, not a lot of people are noticing it. Not a lot of people would even notice something like Dell being a robot or maybe even Coco being anything but a dead rabbit. Animal Crossing, Town Planner. Uh, this one just references uh, the many different applications that have been built throughout the Animal Crossing series, uh, mostly third party, that uh, allow you to plan out your town, blueprint stuff before you actually commit to it in your actual game because that stuff costs a lot of time and costs a lot of bells. So you usually want to try to map everything out before you commit to doing it in the game. And there's been a lot of cool applications that you can do that with, especially with the release of uh, New Horizons. There's been a lot of cool 3D town planners online that are usually open source and free. Wanted posters. Uh, so in the first Animal Crossing game, the police station has this wanted poster up and there's a couple people featured on this wanted poster and uh, a lot of players have wondered who these characters are there's been no mention of them since uh, but there was one person who found a character that looks a lot like the bearded man on the wanted poster he looks a lot like booster 7 which is a bearded character from super mario rpg for the snes i could honestly see this because he looks a lot like the guy on the poster i mean he has the beard the horns and it, it makes sense that this would be referenced in another Nintendo game. Possibly some devs came from that game over to work on Animal Crossing and they wanted to reference it or something. As for the mouse lady, probably just referencing fucking Minnie Mouse, dude. I don't know. <laughs> Boondocks. Uh, Boondocks in the Animal Crossing series is a town that is located north of the player's town, its most notable role was in Animal Crossing Wild World, but it's also mentioned sometimes in the other Animal Crossing games. Uh, the name Boondocks actually comes from the word Boondocks, which means an uncivilized or poor area. You can find information about them when you first make a donation, and the teller at the post office, whether it be Pelly or Phyllis, as we talked about before, we all know Phyllis by now, but they will inform you and tell you about 
some of the information of the city, the town of Boondocks. According to Phyllis and Pally, Boondocksians just eat grilled cheese, but since there is no bread or cheese, they force to eat fried dirt without ketchup. However, this may just be an exaggeration, as one of the letters sent to the player claims Boondocksians usually eat day-old croissants. So, really not that bad over there. Uh, you can even hit a certain bell amount and different things will start happening. The Pelicans will tell the player that Boondocksians decided to take the money and build a well for mud baths because they just... They love being poor over there. I mean, you know poor people. They love being poor, right? Uh, after a few more donations and a few more interactions with the birds at the post office, uh, you will start getting letters enclosed with feathers. And these this, these feathers come straight from uh, the town of Boondocks itself. And there's no other way to get the feathers in the game besides donating to Boondocks and building an established relationship with the town. After you've donated over 3 million bells to Boondocks, it will then transform into Boondopolis. You heard me right. Boondopolis. And then you will receive the final gift from these poor people who are now thriving metropolis. The rainbow feather. Finally. The rainbow feather. Uh, there's some speculation to whether Boondocks actually even exists or not uh, because of the fact that Tortimer... Is suspected of taking the donations for himself. Uh, some cranky villagers sometimes claim that Tortimer is just just flexing how much cash he has. Like I'm having steak tonight, just to nobody, and that he's installing a new plasma TV at his house right after a villager made a donation. Uh, villagers get very skeptical and uh, 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 assuming of Tortimer for stealing the donations and the supposed boondocks is just a manipulation tactic on Tortimer's part so he can have his steak dinners and his plasma TVs. I like that theory. I, I, I like the idea of boondocks and the fact that maybe it, it, it didn't even exist in the first place and it's just up to a little corrupt turtle being a little dude, Farley. Farley is a character in Animal Crossing and Dobutsu no Mori E+, who gives the player the Golden Axe. We talked about this guy earlier when we were talking about Serena. He appears in the first GameCube games. However, getting to him may be a little bit harder than it is in City Folk with Serena because players must maintain a perfect field rank for 15 consecutive days. Uh, very interestingly noted that Farley is one of the only other human characters in the game that we can see. He is just a little crouched old man with a beard, some old wizard guy. But other than the villagers and the villagers' supposed family, I don't think there's ever been an instance of another human in Animal Crossing. So it's very interesting that it took place with Farley. And he's kind of been blacklisted. He's the Brendan Fraser of Animal Crossing, dude. He's out of there. He hasn't been mentioned since. Uh, I kind of like to think that maybe Farley is an ancient relative of the of the villager. Maybe his uh, granddad or something. Brutus the Bulldog. Uh, so this is uh, one of those crisp, great, just nostalgic urban legends that surrounded Animal Crossing in the early 2000s when it first came out. Uh, basically, Brutus the Bulldog is a non-existent NPC villager that was supposed to move into your town after you had been away for much too long. You'd open the game again and a new villager would have moved in and you would have been informed that it was Brutus the Bulldog. When he moved in, he would do unusual things like speaking in binary and crashing the game, which is very troublesome for the first game because Resetti is a big problem in that game. Uh, there's not too many images of Brutus existing because of course he's fake. But some people have done mock 3D models of Brutus, and it's a very interesting urban legend that feels like the hero Brian, maybe, of the Animal Crossing universe. Animal Crossing Pioneer Program. The Animal Crossing Pioneers Program was a early Nintendo contest in which Nintendo wanted applicants to submit a written 50 words or less explaining why they should be chosen as pioneers. And these pioneers would get advanced promotional copies of the original Animal Crossing along with a couple goodies and even a memory card, I believe. Uh, these pioneers received the game a month early and were expected to help Nintendo generate online buzz in advance of the title's release. They were giving exclusive access to their own web forum where they could discuss the game and provide feedback directly to Nintendo. 
this is a pretty cool contest to get people's feet wet with the Animal Crossing series, especially in North America. I think this is now definitely on a lot of collectors' radars because because there's evidence of the promotional copy and calendar and some of the collector's items uh, that was in this contest that you won uh, going for upwards of $500 back in 2014. PS5 or... Pioneer Boys. Ica Village. Uh, Ica Village is one of the earliest Animal Crossing creepypastas, and it originates from a town made in New Leaf. Uh, it grew in popularity pretty fast because of its grim and dark uh, atmosphere around the town. You can walk around and see uh, bodies laying on the ground, a lot of references to death and uh, murder and blood and all that good shit. Looking back on it now, it's not super creepy because of the fact that uh, it's, it's in Animal Crossing, like Animal Crossing 2. So Animal Crossing 2 was actually the very closely planned sequel to the original Animal Crossing on GameCube, and they were developing it pretty close to the release of the English version of the original Animal Crossing. There's video for Animal Crossing DS shown at E3 2004 that has the gameplay of an unfinished version of Animal Crossing Wild World which many people think is the beta footage for Animal Crossing 2. There's only really one beta image that exists of Animal Crossing 2, and it shows a well with a couple of new, at the time, uh, villagers sitting and having a picnic. So from this screenshot, many people just expected that this would be another expanded version of Animal Crossing with even more stuff to do characters items and everything missing mystery islands so in animal crossing new horizons there's actually 20 archetypes for the mystery islands these are the ones you fly out with nook miles tickets that you get by grinding out those sweet sweet nook miles uh, these of course are the ones that usually are very small in size have a beach usually have coconut trees um, usually sometimes you can get uh, foreign fruit and plant them back on your island. There's actually five of these islands that are missing within the game's data, and I believe this is what this tier is referencing. Harvey's Island. Harvey's Island is an island in Animal Crossing New Horizons in which the character of Harvey, already pretty weird, you know, hippie type dog character that uh, already gives off a little bit of weird vibes, he's got his own island now, and there's cameras and lights and everything set up in inside and it's supposed to give the vibe of like the promoting the picture mode in the game and uh but it comes off as a weird porno studio especially the fact that harvey himself is very like a chill probably smokes pot uh i know at the beginning i said we would be covering three layers but this uh the first two layers took way longer than i expected uh, we might even stretch this out into the B3 videos, but I will try to get the last three layers in the next video. Uh, thank you guys for watching these iceberg videos. Uh, this will be in the playlist if you haven't seen my other iceberg videos. I've done one on Luigi's Mansion and Banjo-Kazooie, so go check those out if that sounds interesting to you. Uh, thanks so much. Don't forget to subscribe for more iceberg videos and uh, leave a like on this video.